Let's begin with our opening hymn, 728, in the blue hardcover hymnal. Please stand. We remember the name spoken over us at our baptism as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and sin against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. good. Inspire us, your humble servants, to long for what is right, and through your gracious guidance, accomplish it to your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The three Bible readings this morning, I'll talk about loving, loving others as Jesus has loved us. First, we have an example of that kind of love, page 1114, 1114 in your pew Bible. We're looking at the, the history or acts of the apostles, chapter 9, starting at the little number 36, and here we have a woman named Tabitha. Giving, giving of her abilities, and making clothing for those who lack. Acts chapter 9, we start at verse 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which, when translated, is Dorcas, who was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, 
So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please, come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she got up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called the believers and the widows and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. This is God's word. Amen. Amen. We've sung this uh, arrangement of Psalm 16 a number of times now, so I hope you can join in. The psalmist says, Apart from you, Lord, I have no good thing. So we can sing in the psalm. I've got a good thing. I've got a good thing in the Lord. Join in as you can. You're my safe place, you're my Lord. Hide you from the cup you pour over. second reading and also the message for our sermon today, an admonition and encouragement to love, to love one another. We're in the first letter of John, 1 John we call it, chapter 4, 
verse 7 to look at for the big number 4 and the little number 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Jump ahead to verse 19. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Amen. This is God's word. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join me in the Alleluia. Gospel this morning from page 1090. Page 1090 in the Pew Bible. Here is Jesus the night before he showed what love is. The night before he died, encouraging his disciples. We're in John chapter 15, verse 9. So we're looking for the big number 15 and the little number 9. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You, are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, 
fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. The gospel of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In your pew, you should have a little blue binder. It says Friendship Register on the front, if you can fill that out. And just kind of look around you in your pew, around you. If somebody doesn't know what I'm talking about, could you help them, help them find that little Friendship Register, fill that out, and uh, thank you for that. We're going to invite the children forward at this time for a little children's message. says God at the top and it has a heart on it. And what I want you to do, if you don't mind, is you can maybe put the paper oh you're all done. Okay, I didn't give you paper yet. Um, I want you to color in the, the heart. I'll show you. I'll show you. So see I got God there. And you color in the this pretend it's God's heart. And you color in as much as how much love you think is in God's heart. Then put that much pink in there, okay? Okay, hey, I'm going to give you one. I got some here. Got one. All right. If you want to color on the, maybe on the flat, on the flat tile here, it might work better. And I'll give you one. Okay. There we go. I got one more. And Ezra, you want to help? Yeah, you want to help? I'm on my cut. Help my cut color. Okay. Here, we put put it on the flat, on the flat floor here. We need to color right on it. Okay, just put as much as pink in the heart as you think. Is it broken? Let me see. No, that's good. It works good. You gotta press hard. Okay, you're all done. You just wait. Now keep. However much love you think is in God's heart, you put that much pink in the heart, okay? She, what does that say? It says God. Yeah. Yep. How much love do you think should go in there? You fill it up with as much pink as you think is there. You all done? You still you're gonna go on the flat part. That's good. That's good. You all done? Are you going down there too? Okay. You just fill it up. If you think God's heart is halfway full of love, then put halfway pink. Or if you think it's mostly love, except around the edges, then don't put pink around the edges. Thinking about God's heart. You gonna leave that part with no pink? Or you gonna put pink in there too? You finish yours? Okay. If you hold on to that, I'll take your crayon. Put it back in line. Still working? You all done? Okay. You 
foot until you're done. You're all done, Micah? What was your prayer break? No, that was it. That's what prayer break. You should put as much pink as you think. So go in there. Till you think that's how much love God has in his heart. Hmm? Maybe two? Two loves? Maybe? Maybe? Okay. How are you doing? You, you all set? Okay. You hold on to that. I'll take the crayon. Look at that. It's even coming out a little bit. Coming out of the heart. Okay. 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 Looks like all you filled it filled it right up. You filled it right up with pink, huh? Because you think God's heart is just full of love all the way to the top. All the parts of it. Look at that. You filled yours up too. Wow. Well, let me show you one that I made. I'll show you one that I made. You want to see how much pink I put? Okay. How about that? <laughs> it's all pink. All the way, because God is pink all the way through. He's love all the way through, isn't he? Even whatever, wherever his heart or outside his heart, his whole self, his whole self is pink. I cheated, didn't I? I used pink paper. <laughs> but that's what we're going to hear about in the message today. Can we pray about that? Let's pray. Can you fold your hand? Fold your hand. Dear God, we, we love thinking about how much you love us. Help us to really listen to that in the message today. And whenever we have a hard time in life, help us to turn to you and to remember that there really is a God in heaven and he loves us so much. We love you, God. Amen. Thank you. Take your picture with you, okay? We'll see you later. going to be singing our, our hymn in a little bit. It's in the Blue Hardcover Hymnal, number 730. Before we do that, just invite you one more time, if you haven't already, grab that Blue Friendship Register. We'd love to have a record that you would hear. Also, in the bulletin, you should find a half sheet like this that has an outline on the, uh, on the one side of our message today, in case that helps you. And then on the other side, there's a little tear-off portion for your prayer requests or signing up for upcoming things here. We'll talk some more about that after the message. So we'll go to the red, the, the blue hardcover hymnal, uh, hymn 730.
with your garden home's family. Love comes from God. That's what John said in our verses today. Love comes from God because God is because God is love. There's some pretty profound truths there and they tell us a lot about love and they tell us a lot about God. Let's start with the love. That's a pretty good thing to start with in most things in life. Love. We think about our world. Most people know how to love. And that's a good thing. The Bible tells us that God has written his law on every human heart. He's written his law of love. The love is the fulfillment of the law. And, and so even though we know we've got a messed up world, we've got a broken world, I hardly walk down the street without people telling me, Pastor, be careful out there. Be careful out there. Okay. Because there are bad things that happen, and yet, and yet most people do not act like greedy monsters. And that is a good thing. And it's not just because they know the Lord. All different kinds of people, they understand what it means to care, and that we're supposed to care about other people. And you can look at all different religions in the world. You can look at the Buddhists or the Muslims or the Hindus, or of course the Jewish people who use most of our same Bible. You can look at the people who don't even think there is a God. And they understand we should care about other people. I should care about my mama. I should care about my children. And when somebody really needs help, I should probably help them. And uh, so that's our evidence, isn't it? That God wrote that on the heart. Now, people will say, well, that's just how we evolved. That's just how, how we, you know, we are social animals. <laughs> okay, that's what they believe. But John says, where did that come from? Love comes, love comes from God. And so it's a good idea to give him credit for that. When's the last time you thank God for all the love that there is in, in the world? for the fact that most marriages never get divorced. Thank God. Most people follow the rules most of the time. Thank God. Most parents actually take care of their children. Thank God. Thank God. And, and most people, when they see somebody in big trouble, they want to help. Maybe they don't help. Maybe they're just not sure how. But they want to. Thank God. Let's give God some credit. You imagine how broken this world would be if God had not written that on every heart. If people did not have a conscience. <laughs> how could we even live? I mean, with the fabric of society, it would, it would be, it'd be tatters. It'd be a mess. And yet, I think we can see the way John talks about love in our Bible verses for today. He's, he's talking about something on another level. He's talking about some deeper kind of a love because of what he says. He says, everybody who has this love has been born of God. In other words, this is not a love that comes naturally, but you have to be made a new person. You have to be changed, transformed inside, born again into a whole new you in order to have this love. He says everyone who has this love knows God. In other words, this is a love that is only going to be in your life once you have found the Lord. And, and that knowledge of the goodness of God has changed you. He's talking about the kind of love we can only see in, in our Savior Jesus. Uh, you have people who, when somebody, uh, their loved one says, I love you, they'll say back, love you more. <laughs> love you more. That's, that's what God says to us. A couple different ways. 
Love you more. Love you more than you love me. Yes. Love you more than heaven itself. <coughs> this is how God showed his love among us, John says. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. In other words, God and his son had perfect happiness together in heaven and, and left that. God's son left that to come down here to join us in our poverty and our pain and our sweat and our tears and our blood and even in our death. Because he loved you more than heaven itself. Loved you more than life itself. This is love, John says. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son as what? As an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That's talking about the cross. Love you more. Love you more than, than life itself. That's what God showed. He went to the cross to atone, to pay, to make up for all your sins, all the crud that you've done in your life. He said, I don't want sin to have you. I want to have you, so I will die for you. Because I love you more, more than heaven itself, more than life itself. Oh, yes, and God says, loved you first. We love because he first loved us. He didn't wait till you had your act together. He didn't wait till you were good. He didn't wait till you believed in him. He didn't wait till you loved him. He loved you first. While we were still sinners, Christ <coughs> died for us. While we were powerless, while we were enemies of God, he loved us. And then he says, what? Well, since God has so loved us, let's love one another. So we heard Jesus, John learned that from Jesus, didn't he? We heard Jesus say that the night before he died. Greater love has no one in this that you lay down your life. So now I'm doing that for you. Love each other as I love you, Jesus. This, I mean, we're so glad that God has written love on every human heart. What a mess our world would be without that basic understanding. Oh, I should care about other people? Okay. But, but, but Jesus and John are talking about something else, aren't they? This is, this is real love. And this is the kind of love we are to show for each other. A few weeks ago, I, I preached for you and I came out of the church to get to my car and across the street was a woman at the bus stop waiting for the bus. And to, to be polite, I said, how you doing? And she said something to me like, would you care? <laughs> so I came across the street to investigate what was going on here. And uh, it turned out that uh, she, she wanted to share the word with me. She said, you know what the Bible says. If you see someone in need and you have no pity on them, the love of God is not in you. She was quoting from our, our same book of the Bible, 1 John. She was trying to say, oh, if you come out of that church, but you're not a Christian, otherwise you would help me. And as we were talking, when it came out, she had a big cart with the most of her worldly possessions there because she had just been kicked out of her home. And uh, she, But she said she didn't need any money. She had money. And I was pretty sure she didn't want to come and stay at my house, even if I could come <laughs> convince my family of that. Uh, so I asked her, well, how can I help you? And you know what she said? She said, you tell me. You tell me. I think partly she was saying that to be smart. <laughs> but I think partly she was saying that because if she knew what kind of help she needed, she wouldn't have been in that mess in the first place. And there are a lot of people who legitimately... They do not know what will help them. 
two things from, from that that just happened a few weeks ago right outside our church. A few things from that. One is that, that woman was right. I mean, she was right. If we don't love, if we see someone in each house and we have no pity in our heart, we do not belong to God. We are fake. Sitting in the church pew does not prove that you belong to God. Love proves that. This is my command. We heard Jesus say it. You want to remain in my love, keep my command. Here's my command. What I, the way I love you, you have to do that. Trying to be a Christian without love is like trying to win the playoffs without Giannis and Damien. <laughs> Just, I mean, you may go out there and try, but she, it doesn't work. In fact, you, you shouldn't even try. Don't try to be a Christian without love. Fix it. Repent. Whoever does not love, John says, does not know God because God is love. And if you say, oh, I love God, I have God in my life, but then you don't have, you're a liar, John says. Because how can you love someone you've never seen when you obviously don't even know how to love the people you do see? So that woman was, was right. If I'm just going to, oh, how you doing, people, when I'm on my way out of church and not actually care, that, that isn't a Christian. And the other thing I take away from what that woman said, you tell me, she said. Because to really love someone, to really help someone, you might need more than three minutes at a bus stop. Because they might not even know how they need to be helped. Think about that good Samaritan. He saw the man on the side of the road. And what did he do? Chuck a box of band-aids at him? No, oh, he, he went over to him, found where the wounds were. And cleaned and bandaged each one. It took some time. It takes some time to find where our neighbor's wounds are. And that's love. I was reading uh, an article. It'll come, it'll come. Oh, there it is. I was reading an article about a doctor uh, in, a, in a homeless clinic. So, so this doctor, in her work, she goes out in the neighborhood and talks to all the homeless people, tries to establish some trust, you know, how you doing, or anything on your mind today, and eventually get them to come in and get checked out, get whatever kind of help they need in her clinic. And, and the, what struck me about that story is she says this one uh, man, it took her three years Three years of greeting him, trying to be friendly to him, before he would finally come into the clinic and get, and get help. Three years of hellos, but, but the thing is, I, did, I was wrong. I went back and read the article, and, and it, was actually, it was actually seven years. <laughs> seven years that she was walking through that neighborhood, greeting the same man, until finally, he came into the clinic and now he's on the path for housing and a path to quit his drinking. Seven years of hello. In other words, what, 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 it, whatever it takes. Because I love you, Jesus says. Since God has so loved us, let us love one another. This is, this is a love that's ready to give, give up. Give, give it all up. Heaven, life, whatever I need to do. And where does that come from? <laughs> love comes from God. Whew. That tells us a lot about love. And it tells us a lot about, a lot about God. 
Love comes from God because God is love. What, what does that really mean? That means that's what you are always going to find in God's heart. From top to bottom, inside, outside, whatever little corner of God's heart you dig into, whatever thing in your life, why did this happen or why is this going on, and you get the answer from God, the answer the, behind it all is love. It's, that's what you're going to find because God is love. What is always going to come from God is love. John likes to talk that way, doesn't he? We, we looked last month at some words from John that, that he's life. What does God always want for you? To live. And then we looked at how, how, uh, how he is light. What does God always have? It's always light, no darkness. In him there is no darkness at all. And now the same kind of thing today. What is in the heart of God always for you? Is love. Whenever you turn to God, that's what you're going to find because that's what comes from him. Love comes from God. If only we could believe that. And it's love before you get yourself all figured out. Why? Right? He loved us first. So it's before you uh, put your life together. It's before you stop that sin. It's before you figure out what you're supposed to be doing with your life or how to handle this issue in your life. Before anything, before you were even born. God loved you. He loved us first. So, so what do you think you're going to find now from him? I mean, he's loved you since the, beginning, since the beginning of time. He made this world with you in his mind. This, this kind of thought, God is love. And he showed that love. He proved that love. Christmas morning, when he left heaven to come down here to save you. That's the kind of love he has for you. He proved his love for you at the cross because he died for you. He proved his love is going to last forever. Easter morning, because he lives. This, this has to be the foundation, not just of our strength to love other people. We love because he first loved us. Oh yeah, that's where I got to keep going to again and again to find strength to love someone who doesn't even respond to me for seven years or whatever, right? To just love and love and love. Oh yes, but also whenever I'm worried, whenever I am afraid, I got to go back to this. I got to go back to this foundational truth that there is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven who is in charge of me of me, who made me, who put me together the way that I am, with all my faults and imperfections and weaknesses, there's a God in heaven who made me, who made this day, who made my life, who cares about all the people that I care about, and his heart toward me is love. So when I'm worried for my children, I think, well, there's a God in heaven who's in charge of my children's life and his heart toward them is love. When I'm worried for my church, when I'm worried for my parents, when I'm worried for my siblings, when I'm worried for my country, or <laughs> whatever you are afraid of, when I'm worried about tomorrow or my health, or, well, there is a God in heaven who cares about those things and rules over those things and loves those people, whatever, and, and, and that's his whole heart. He is love. So why are you afraid? Why am I afraid? I mean, there's other philosophies that people use to get through life. I don't think they can match this one. There's a, there's a, a, a poem. Uh, it's called Invictus, or Unconquered. Maybe you're familiar with it. Uh, it's the last two lines of it go like this. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Nelson Mandela recited this uh, in prison to keep himself going. A lot of people, Vietnam uh, prisoners, you know, in, in the prisons in Vietnam for years, they would write this to each other with whatever they could find to read. Hey, we, we, we shouldn't give up. 
I don't want to get into all the meaning of this poem or what's behind it, but this is a philosophy that can get people through life. I'm in charge today. My decisions matter. Let's go. Willpower. <laughs> okay. But uh, I like, I like uh, John's philosophy better. That uh, there's a God in heaven. And he's, he's the master of my faith. He's the captain of my soul. And his heart toward me is love. So even when I don't have willpower, even when I don't want to try anymore today, even when I'm done, and I want to just quit, it's not all up to me. There's a God in heaven. It's up to him. And he proved his heart to me. Christmas morning, Good Friday afternoon, Easter morning, his heart toward me is love. So I guess I can take another step, take another breath. Amen? Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up. Let's talk about our God who used the old word for the Apostles' Creed. We have that page 8. In the in the void. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in prayer before the throne of God. Loving God, loving God and Lord, you created the universe that surrounds us and the globe on which we live. You control all things through your Son who sits at your right hand in glory. Give us, give your word power as it works in our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion and demolish our doubts. Send your spirit to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and our desire to live according to your will. The signs of the times warn us that the end of time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Spare us and Christians around the world from all forms of hate and persecution. Give us courage to bear the cross, patience, and joy. Instill in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they prepare for future days. Help them distinguish between what is passing and what is eternal, between instant thrills and lasting joy. Encourage more young people to prepare for service in the public ministry of the gospel. Hold in your care, Lord, those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain and all who are afflicted by disease or facing death. Pour out your compassion on the grieving and comfort the mourners who miss someone they love. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence.
Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send them. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Once again, I'll just point out that uh, little insert has a tear-off portion where you can uh, put your prayer requests on there. So whatever you were praying about in our silent prayer time, I'd, I'd, I'd consider it a privilege if you'd write that on here and let me pray for that also this coming week. You can put that in with the offering today. Thank you. couple more songs and prayers today. Join in with this next one as, as you can. We haven't sung it for, for a little bit. Yeah. 
by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's stay standing for the last hymn. It's in the blue paperback songbook, number 298.
talk about uh, complaining, learning to complain from the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, is complaining always wrong? How to complain in a godly way and also uh, how to overcome doomsday thinking? How to, you know, how to open a pickle jar, he says, what can teach us? So that's in the cafeteria today uh, for uh, three more Sundays after today. Let's see, what else? Uh, Thursday night, you got plans for Thursday night? Thursday night, not busy? Well, uh, 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, what did he do? Send it into heaven. And that's this Thursday. We're getting together with Siloa and St. James and St. Matthew and Body Word and uh, three different preachers and five different choirs or something uh, over at St. James. I believe the service is at 6.30. If you check that out for me. 6, uh, 6.30 at St. James. Refreshments afterward. I'm one of the preachers. Just a little message. Uh, should be really should be really nice. So, you don't have plans? Let's be there. It says 60th and Lloyd. 60th and Lloyd. Beautiful church. Should be a beautiful service and a chance to be surrounded with some of our brothers and sisters from our neighboring churches. Thursday night. What time? 6.30, 6.30, St. James. Uh, something else I should be saying today? All right, love you. God is good. All the time. All the time.